How many children get lost in Disney theme parks each day? The answer is on average 11. The average time they spend missing is 30 minutes. In reality, they just wander away from their parent or guardian and quickly find each other again. As a child, a theme park is probably one of the best places to get lost. Limited controlled access means no one is going to try to kidnap you, and there are dozens of employees and information centers whose best interest is to get you back to your guardian. So, it's not really an issue. None. Parents get lost all the time, though. Disney has no lost children's station, but each park has a lost parent station where they can inquire about the whereabouts of their children. If you mean how many parents fail to reconnect with their children before they leave the park, file a police report for kidnapping and end up putting the kid's face on milk cartons for years? Zero, never happened, urban legends. People get separated all the time. If you are worried about your kids wandering off, what a lot of parents do, is write their name and cell phone number on the child's arm or clothing. That way if a cast member finds your child, then they can contact you and tell you where to find your child. They may even bring the child to you. You may also check with child, or baby care. Or approach any cast member. They will get a description to everyone to be on the lookout for your child. Often, I often found that your child has already been found, we are usually looking for lost parents. When I was six, I got lost at Disney World. My dad let go of my hand, simple mistake, and I got lost in the thick crowd. I began to frantically look around, but couldn't see him. Beforehand, my parents had discussed with me what to do if I got lost. They instructed I go up to one of the employees, recognizable by their matching vests slash shirts. So, that's what I did. I went up to one of the people in the gold vest standing outside of one of the buildings. I went up to the lady and got her attention, then said that I was lost and couldn't find my parents. She took me over to a daycare place, for when adults need alone time, and put me in the back with a coloring book to calm me down. They then went over the radio and said where they were, and a description of me. My mother had been talking to one of the security guards and matched my description, so they walked my family over to where I was at. I'm so glad that my parents educated me on what to do if I got lost. Because of that, one of the workers was able to guide me to a safe place where they can direct my parents to me. Often, I often found that your child has already been found, we are usually looking for lost parents. I refuse to say that I got lost in this scenario but rather, my parents lost me. For an absurdly long amount of time before realizing I wasn't with them. Insulting really? We have a fair that rolls through town every fall called the Western Fair. It stays for around two weeks, wreaks havoc on that area of the city and on parents' wallets everywhere, and is every local child's pure exhilaration on a sugar rush. I must have been about age seven when my parents, my brother, my sister and I went to the fair. Everything was going smoothly when all of a sudden I couldn't see any of them. My dad had always told me to stay exactly where I was if I got lost and he would find me. So I sat on a bench and waited. And waited. And waited. My eyes began to well up when I felt like dad was never coming to find me. My family had forgotten me and I was going to have to join the circus, I thought that was the same as joining the fair. Finally, trying not to cry, I look up at the sky and what do I see? My family. Riding. My Ferris wheel without me. That's when I lost it. I started crying in earnest. There was a man working in the booth beside the bench I was sitting on and he heard me crying. He came over with some napkins to wipe my eyes and asked what happened. He was an older man with kind eyes and a nice smile but I did not know him. He asked me to come into his booth because he had something that would cheer me up. I said no thank you I was told to wait on the bench. And that's when he told me the trick we should play on my parents. His booth was the tattoo booth. He could do real tattoos, henna tattoos or stick on tattoos for kids. He brought a whole bunch of tattoos to the bench and we covered both of my full arms with tattoos to make me look like a biker just to shock my parents and tell them this is what happens when they leave me behind. My parents saw me from the Ferris wheel apparently but they wouldn't stop the ride for them so they came straight to where I was when the ride was over. And that sweet man turned what could have been an awful day into a cute and fun experience for me. And you should have seen my mom's face when she realized how hard it was to get the tattoos off for school ha ha ha. Were you ever left anywhere as a child and what happened? I swear I am not making this up. Out of about 7 or 8, I got left behind in Central Park in New York City during a field trip. Thankfully, it was in the late 1950s that this occurred. I lived in northern New Jersey, and our class in school went on a field trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. 
We then walked over to Central Park and had box lunch. I remember when I got lost. I stopped to buy a pack of Juicy Fruit Beach Nut Gum. When I completed my purchase, I looked around and realized that I was alone. They all went somewhere and left me behind. That's what happens when you are a quiet person. If a child gets lost today, we tell them to stay put. Look for an adult they can trust. Don't panic. Don't wander. No one told me that 60 years ago. After I looked around for them for a while, I realized, reasoning as a child, that if I didn't find my way back to the museum to the right bus, then they would all go home and leave me alone in New York City. I certainly did not want that to happen, so I took off and looked for the museum. To do this, I had to ask dozens of people for directions. I was shy, and I could not say Metropolitan Museum of Art without stuttering and stammering. I couldn't remember all the directions. People gave me wrong directions. Somehow, I found the museum and then had to find out where the parking lot was for our school bus. That's when I found out that all yellow school buses look the same, so I had to knock on the bus doors and ask. Somehow, by the grace of God, I found the correct bus, and fell into a seat. Five minutes later, the bus left the parking lot to travel to Central Park, where my fellow classmates were. I was quite proud of myself and all I had accomplished. My classmates got back on the bus, as well as the many adult chaperones. What did they say? They yelled at me. How dare I leave the park? Where had I been? It turned out that they had been frantically searching for me, because at some point, they finally counted heads and realized that one of us was missing. Ah. This story had a good ending, and when I went on to be a teacher, I was one of the most careful teachers around on field trips. No lost kids, and they all knew what to do if they got separated from the group. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to subscribe and click the like button. When the stories run out, make sure to flip the tape over to continue. Adios amigos.